Good afternoon, everyone. I um, hope you can all hear me. I'm absolutely delighted to be joining you all today. Um, I do feel a little bit like I've got a graveyard shift over lunch, so I will promise to do my best to keep you as entertained as possible um, through your lunch break um, and tell you a little bit about um, what I'd like to take you through today. Um, so let me just get my screen working to begin with. Okay, so full disclaimer, I am coming live from Australia this afternoon. So hence the dark display behind me. Uh, Work 180, we're a global operation and has head of client engagement. I look after both the UK and Australia. So it does see me working some very funny time zones, but I wouldn't have missed this event for the world today because I really wanted the opportunity mm. to share some of our um, information with you. So might start by giving you a little bit of a run through about Work 180 because not all of you might be familiar with who we are. So like I said, we're a global platform um, and we really like to think that we're kind of revolutionizing the way that um, top, I guess, that women are really searching for their next career opportunities. So um, we are very transparent when it comes to showcasing the employers on our platform and those that are really dedicated to driving um, gender equality, diversity and inclusion. So we've, um, over a period of time, have really kind of harnessed a very loyal uh, community of females, top females that are looking for their next um, position. So what we do know is that when it comes to attracting women into niche roles, into leadership positions, into male dominated industries, um, it's not necessarily as simple as just putting up a job spec um, or putting up a job ad and hoping for the best. Um, these days, what women want to see and to allow you as an organization to really ensure that you're attracting culturally aligned women to your organization, it really is now about having and showcasing a very, very inclusive brand. So that's probably um, the biggest takeaway of anything just, just to sort of resonate with you today is um, attracting women in this day and age calls for much more um, than just hoping that you're going to be able to attract them through the various different job ads that you place up online these days. So I think um, a question that I wanted to kind of ask the audience actually um, before we go any further, because we've just had some groundbreaking research which has come out of Australia, which we're all incredibly excited about because it fits nicely within the gender equity space. And this piece of research has been in progress now for about six years. It was mm -hmm. undertaken by the Workplace Gender Equality Agency, uh, which, is, uh, which was formed in 2012 as part of the Workplace Gender Equality Act. And their role is to really improve gender equality um, across Australia. But by no means is this research just limit itself to Australia. So a question that I just wanted to ask the audience today, and maybe you can just sit on this because I can't actually see those of you that are listening to me today. So if as a business leader, there was one simple action that you could take to implement in your business to add value to your organization and bolster your financial performance would you act on it immediately and i hope for most of you you're sat there nodding especially in this covid world uh, where i think profitability and financial sustainability is a really key uh, driver for any organization right now um, and I guess one of the answers to this question does sit around um, female participation within organisations. So the Workplace Gender Equality Research, um, in conjunction with Bank West, has essentially now seen a casual correlation between the number of female leaders and also female CEOs and the market value that this has on AX 
ASX listed organizations. So this is quite incredible. We're now seeing that there is an increase of 105 million on the market value of ASX listed companies if they have 10 to 30 percent female leaders within their organization. If they have a female CEO, that's with 80 million. If they have increases in female management overall, again, kind of working on that 10 to 30 percent, then we're seeing a complete outperformance in the sector. So if ever there was a time to act on gender equality, for a long time we've been talking about how gender is great for business, how diversity is great for innovation. Now is a time when we've got the facts you know, we've got the financial research that backs this up. So it's a really strong business case for any talent acquisition leader or any recruitment leader or any business executive that's in a position of privilege and influence to take this to their C-suite, to their executive team and really start challenging them on what the, the current demographic looks like within your organisation and what you could do to really harness um, gender equity within your organization and really it's this what drives us to work 180 we're absolutely passionate about working with our employers to really unlock diversity and enable them to harness it to the best of their ability um, to make themselves thrive so a little bit about what I'm going to talk about today uh, the typical talent challenges that businesses are facing and how they just got harder I think for most of us we're feeling it's an incredibly tough environment to operate in at the moment and obviously talent acquisition and recruitment is no different uh, four areas to focus on when it comes to your employer brand um, and case studies from our employers who we feel are really nailing this right now So the talent challenges that just got harder and, and some of these may be things that are already across your radar and you're already considering, but um, internal mobility. So with obviously having a very remote workforce these days, it's difficult for organizations to understand the skill set that they've got across their organization, let alone try and harness that to make sure that they're making the most of internal transitions and internal secondments. Um, so that's quite a difficult challenge for a lot of um, our talent acquisition teams. And this is feedback that we're getting continuously across uh, the 250 different employers that we represent at the moment. Candidate experience. I think at the moment for businesses that are still hiring, you're obviously getting absolutely smashed in terms of the number of candidates that are applying for your positions. And I think that the biggest thing that's being called out now is where candidates aren't having a particularly great experience with the organization that they've put an application in for. And look, I think that it's a really challenging scenario right now where you do have hundreds and hundreds of applications for one role, but I think really it's just getting back to basics and having a general level of respect for any person that has reached out to your organization for a position. And I think that it's things like this which will stay in people's minds as, as COVID disappears around how they were treated by the organization and what the aftermath is um, of those types of experiences. So um, for us, we actually have a feedback loop. So any candidate that registers for a role with one of our employers has the opportunity to feedback to us in a confidential forum. So that gives us an opportunity to then share that experience with the employer. We're calling it the pre-glass doors because you have an opportunity to amend any particular um, nuances about that experience to make Make sure that candidates aren't having that similar type of experience if they're applying for a position for your organization again. Uh, connected cultures is a big one for us right now and I, I think that everyone's probably in the same boat in terms of how they're navigating connecting their staff at the moment with obviously having dispensed workforces and cultures that were built on um, having Friday drinks perhaps or having a gym session once a week it's how we're now navigating that in a completely remote lifestyle with some people that aren't enjoying having a remote lifestyle and those that want to get back to the office. 
human experience, um, not just employee experience. So again, I think in the world that we're operating in at the moment, sometimes it's hard uh, to keep sight of the humanistic world that we're operating in at the moment. Everything's done over technology. We're in different Zoom meetings. We don't have the opportunity to physically be with each other and sense that camaraderie. So I think one of the talent challenges at the moment is how you ensure that you're coming back to that humanistic nature of what you're doing as an organization. And not forgetting that COVID it has really been quite relentless across all walks of life. I don't think that anyone's been particularly immune from COVID. So it's that kind of constant reminder that um, we are dealing with humans at the moment. And yes, they are employees and yes, they are staff and yes, they are people applying for our roles. But at the same time, everyone's human. We're all in this together and we're just trying to navigate it the best way we can. And I think one of the other talent challenges quite significantly that a lot of organizations are trying to adapt to right now is the technology challenge. So the digital employee experience, it's not something that many of us have had to set up in quite the extent that we've had to before or done it in quite the short time frame that we have had to do it in. So it's kind of thinking about your digital employee experience, almost like your customer centric experience. So the investment that you put into nurturing your customers in a digital landscape now is what are you doing to equally put that energy, time and attention into making sure that your employee experience is as perfect or as brilliant um, when it comes to onboarding them in a remote environment or making sure that they feel connected. Um, Work 180, we've always been 100% remote workforce. So this is nothing new to us. This is business as usual to us. And a lot of what we're having to guide our employers through at the moment is how they step up in this technological revolution to make sure that their employee experience is still absolutely hitting the mark. Because the last thing you want to be doing is onboarding all these wonderful, talented people during this period, only to lose them, um, you know, once COVID dispensed and they've gone somewhere else because they didn't have a particularly wonderful um, onboarding experience with you or um, prevention experience with you. So a couple of the challenges that we're finding is just being really heightened in this environment. Um, and probably now want to take you through some of the areas to focus on. So I'm hearing a lot of people are really questioning, I guess, the relevance of their employer brand at the moment. I think 81% of talent acquisition leaders are thinking that COVID will change their culture, their, their, their company culture forever, which is which is huge. So I think what um, the task is now is to ensure that as talent acquisition and recruitment leaders, you're really looking at how you're connecting with your um, potential talent pool and how you're bringing your culture and your values to life. And a lot of what we talk about with our endorsed employers is what do you want to be known as? What in this market, in COVID times, post-COVID times, what are the one things as brand attributes for your organization do you want candidates to really resonate with? Um, and this is what you become known as for being an employer of choice. Um, and I think it's some things that a lot of organizations are really questioning themselves around at the moment, especially with all the protests that have been going on. They're really kind of holding a mirror up and reflecting on their company culture and values and what they're sharing with the world um, around what they want to be known as. So I, I think now is the time to really get real with that and to bang the drum and to be proud of what you're doing to support your employees through this time. Um, authenticity and transparency. So is your employer brand standing up right now? Again, I think we're really seeing a movement at the moment where companies or individuals are challenging companies and they might be saying that they care about this or they're socially responsible, but actually, is that just words on a page or are they actually demonstrating that through what they're sharing through their employee stories and their employee branding and their LinkedIn page and their social media? Because I think what we're going to see now is a real trend where consumers um, march with their feet. And if brands aren't being authentic, 
to what they truly believe in and they're not being transparent then as consumers we're not going to stand for it and it's certainly not going to be something that helps organizations attract top talent so again it's probably getting real with what makes your brand a phenomenal employer brand what makes your organization an incredible place to work and what do you want to shout about role models so we talk about this a lot and especially important in the gender equity space as women we can't be what we can't see so we want to see role models we want to see brands that are sharing fabulous employee stories about women that are thriving in their workplace and that are completely changing the status quo and this is especially important if you work in very male dominated industries because there's a lot of preconceived ideas and there's a lot of myth busting that needs to happen about women not quite thinking they've got a place at the table and therefore not applying to roles even if they're interested in your organization so i can't stress enough areas to focus on is definitely calling out role models within your organization and they can look across all inclusion groups so again i'm, I'm talking very much from a gender lens in a lot of what i talk about today because that's work 180's mission but we don't exclude anyone we're, we're for all inclusion groups so if you've got great role models now's the time to be really sharing those with the world so they can see how people like them are thriving within your organization and that will encourage them and inspire them and motivate them to want to work for your organization and amplification and internal ambassadors so it's no good having a wonderful employee value brand but not sharing it with anyone because unless i know your organization and i view your linkedin page um, because i know who you are then if you're not sharing that in different platforms and in different communities then your brand is never going to cross my network so the amplification piece is a really important piece to make sure that you're tapping into different communities and you're making sure that you're getting that diversity of talent by taking your brand and lifting it into places that you wouldn't normally be able to reach through your traditional methods so linkedin i've got to come to your page i've got to know who you are to want to be seeing your brand so it's really kind of challenging yourselves now as leaders to think about how can we get our brand bigger how can we get more incredible talent knowing about who we are what makes us amazing so we can attract the top talent in the future and internal ambassadors so there's a stat and i'm not sure if uh, many of you have heard this before but the employee voice is trusted eight times more than the employer voice so of course if you say you're an incredible organization to work for you're gonna say that we're pessimistic people but if one of your employees is saying that they've had a wonderful experience working for your organization and they love everything that you do then as people we're going to be more trusting of that voice so an area to focus on and again something that we talk to our endorsed employers about often is who have you got in your network that can share your story and share it organically and share it authentically to um, make sure that you're really um, getting out there and, and broadcasting that to uh, to more people so hopefully that's helped with a couple of areas to start thinking about if you haven't already or might have just confirmed some of your thinking already um, so who's doing it well so i really wanted to share with you some of the employers who are on our platform that we think have really been nailing it especially through covid because i think covid has been a great time for brands to really step up and i think as a result of some of the support that they're showing their communities they'll probably have lifelong fans and lifelong consumers as a result of that so I think BHP is known in the UK as well, um, but for us, they've absolutely held up the backbone of the Australian economy through COVID. So they've done an incredible job of being very vocal about hiring and also showcasing how they've been able to retrain people from industries that have suffered. So um, airlines being one of them, where they've been able to take lots of people that have been retrenched through the airline industry and retrain them up through different roles so they're seen as a very safe a very secure employer to workforce they do a lot in the women's space so they share a lot of employee stories on our platform to again break the myths 
and share to the world you know how women can thrive within it, their organization they're um, particularly keen to be involved in a lot of our feature campaigns where we'll feature a particular industry um, and then get all of our endorsed employers to share with them a great story of a female that's thriving in that industry and that just really shines a spotlight on that industry to help um, get more women um, applying for positions within their organizations there's also various different um, badges that you can get when you join our platform. So if you come on board as an endorsed employer, you might also decide that, hey, we're great in the flexibility space. So we actually want to show that we're accredited in the flex space as well, because as women, of course, one of the sole motivators for us to leave any job is flexibility. And yes, that's in spades right now. But will that be there post COVID? I'm not sure. So the Flexable certification is, again, another signal to the world that you take this seriously, that this is a commitment to you, that you value this. And as a result of that, um, you know, they just see a huge peak when it comes to women applying for some of their positions. I think in about 18 months from working with us, they went to 10 percent female applications to 50 percent female applications. Another employer who you'll know um, well is South Eastern, so a great employer of ours. And I think what they do really well is probably showcasing a lot in the mental health space and also the menopause space. So when Southeastern came to us, they really wanted to attract women um, in, the, in the older demographic. That for them was something incredibly important to them. So we did a lot of work around benchmarking their policies against some of their peers and some of the industry, and then showed them what some of the new initiatives they might wanna think about forming into their employer branding and menopause was actually a really big initiative for them that they felt was really important to drive and attract women um, in that area. So they speak a lot about the Work 180 endorsement on their various different employee brand campaigns, they have it in all of their recruitment literature. So again, it's the signal to the world that they're committed to diversity, inclusion and gender equity. And they've gone one step further than just having the words on the page and they've actually gone for the accreditation and then they, they share that to the world. Mott McDonald, again, another one that you'll know really, really well, very male orientated organization, as you can imagine. What they do really, really well um, is probably a lot of work in the LGBTIQ community. So again, if you notice with these brands, they're not trying to do all things. They're just trying to find something that they're particularly passionate about and then making sure that that's what they really talk about throughout their employer branding solutions. So um, again, they've been involved in various different campaigns with us, the Women in Engineering. We had a fabulous um, LGBTIQ community um, feature where we're sharing all of our incredible endorsed employers and what they were doing in the space and helping other employers navigate their journey around pride and diversity, part of our um, Equality Talks, which is our podcast, which is another platform to reach a completely different cohort um, of person that you might never have the opportunity to reach um, just through your traditional methods. Um, and finally, Salesforce. This one's very dear to my heart because I just think they have an incredible way of talking about their employer brand. And I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with Salesforce. I mean, clearly they're a global organization, but their culture is called Aloha. So Aloha means family and their employees are literally at the heart of everything they do. So this little man that you can see in the jumper is their icon when they're talking about the Aloha culture and it just feeds into everything that they do. Um, and that kind of extends beyond their employees, their whole ecosystem that they operate in. So their suppliers, their partners, their communities, they take care of each other, they have fun together, they want to improve the world, they do so much good um, in terms of giving back and I think again it comes across very authentically in how they share that um, with the world. So a couple of my favourites that I think have really stood out um, over the last few months 
And obviously that brings us to the end of um, my talk today. Uh, one thing that I will leave you with is that I think this might be something of real value to those of you that are listening today is the Work 180 report. So this is a first of its kind and gives you an opportunity to benchmark your policies and benefits against your competitors, your peers, and the industry. So why is this helpful? Well, this gives you a snapshot into how competitive you actually are when it comes to attracting the top talent. On our platform, all of the employers that we work with, they have a careers page where they highlight their benefits and policies and candidates go on there and search for those that are doing great things. They have great policies and great benefits. So this is a great health check to make sure that you are where you think you are. Um, and there might be some surprises. You might think that you're doing better or you might think that you're doing worse and actually this can confirm or deny that. So if this is something of interest to you, the areas that it covers are parental support, equal pay, flexible working, career development and employee assistance. If this is of interest to you, then reach out to me. There's my email address at the bottom or connect with me on LinkedIn.